Greetings, Taku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you all yet again another The Flash episode review right here on Otaku Assemble. Weekly, and as always, here to bring you the latest in this week's The Flash episode review. And this is my review of Season 2, Episode 22, entitled Invincible. Now, general thoughts on this week's episode. By and large, it was a good episode. Granted, there were a couple of things I had a few issues on, but by the time we got to that ending, oh my goodness, you talking about building up anticipation, building things up throughout the episode, and then finally that when we when we have to stick the landing at the ending, just fell flat, in my opinion. I think that ending just fell flat, squash. And I'll get into more detail with that later on in this review. So, first off, let's kick things off with a brief synopsis of this week's episode. This week, we pick up right where we left off from last week. Barry's returned from the Speed Force with his powers and a new sense of optimism now that the so-called sentient Speed Force has let Barry know that it's rooting for him. It's on his side. And so Barry returns to Central City with this new sense of optimism, feeling as if he's invincible. Why? Because the forces that be are in his corner. And he's faced this week with Zoom's new army of Earth-2 metahumans, not Earth-1 like I previously predicted. Um, it was actually Earth-2 metahumans that Zoom gathered and brought to Earth-1, brought to Central City to try to take over the city. So Barry has to deal with this new threat and the major foil for him in this episode is Laurel's Earth-2 counterpart, Black Siren, who has the comic book abilities of Black Canary. I'm going to touch on that later on in this review. <sighs> Anywho, so Black Siren is our main villain for this episode and then we do get a couple of scenes with zoom throughout the episode too just sort of reminding us that he is still around so um outside of that though caitlin's back with team flash wally decides he wants to go ahead and try to take on these metahumans by himself without actually using any abilities that he knows he has or does not have jesse's in the process of sort of suspecting that she may have been affected by the particle accelerator explosion all the while members of team flash are trying to more or less get inside Barry's head trying to figure out where this new sense of optimism is coming from and try to bring him back down to earth because they don't want him to run out and do something reckless and get himself killed and all in all what ends up happening is Team Flash they put their heads together they figure out a way in which to immobilize the earth to metahumans which gives Barry enough time to go ahead and imprison them all meanwhile Zoom escapes to earth 2 and then comes back by the end of the episode to give Barry his comeuppance so by and large that's a brief synopsis on this week's episode now I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and you know how we do this thing number one let's talk about what works number two let's talk about what needs some improvement and then lastly we'll talk about things that just did not work at all so number one what really worked in this week's episode I like Barry we have an optimistic positively driven proactive Barry now granted yeah the you know the rest of Team Flash and the rest of the main cast sort of thought Barry was kind of odd because they felt like this optimism was misplaced you know sort of like you know, Barry's having allu uh, illusions of grandeur, that he doesn't really comprehend the level of danger that encountering some of these Earth-2 metahumans actually presents. You know, Barry's sort of putting that all, you know, in his rear view. He's like, no, it's like, I know what I have to do. Now I believe that I'm capable and confident enough to do it. So throwing caution to the wind, screw all that. I'm, I'm here to do a job. Let's do it. Now here's the thing. Whether or not we as the audience are supposed to take Barry's attitude in this episode like the rest of the cast is, I think at the end of the day it doesn't really matter because what Barry is actually doing is the important thing. And the fact that for a change we do not have mopey, brooding, uh, second-guessing, conflicted Barry. We have a Barry who's a man on the mission and God be damned, he, he's going to go ahead and he's going to do it. So that I actually thought worked pretty well. Now, I will say this. Everyone's 15 seconds with Barry, how everyone sort of pulls Barry to the side and have the little talk and whatnot. I mean, at, at, at one point, I mean, it did. By the time Joe talked to Barry, it got that's when it started getting predictable. Like, OK, yeah, we're going to have 
different members of Team Flash sort of, you know, talk to Barry and get inside his head and whatnot. Okay, that I kind of feel, I, I think that was a little bit overplayed. But on the other hand, the fact that they each told him something different. And once again, you know, it's one of the few character moments we actually got with the main cast in this episode, you know, they're like that's that's when the episode decided to take its breaks to sort of, you know, give give us those um, those character moments that I could at least appreciate. Those two things, I think, are the things that worked the best. I'm going to go ahead and segue into things I think could have used a little bit more improvement. And the best way I can go ahead and segue into that is to talk about Black Siren because on the one hand, I actually think she was done fairly well. And I think uh, Katie Cassidy did a great job in that portrayal. But I also don't think she could have been written as well as she could have been. All right, so we are dealing with another Earth 2 doppelganger that has, well, this one actually has the abilities that Laurel had to, you know, in it uh, had to employ Cisco to create for her. You know, Sonic Wave Choker that Laurel had, like her Earth 2 counterpart actually has that physical ability. But still, you know, it, just like with Cisco, we're dealing with an Earth 2 counterpart that more or less is just a exaggerated version of what their Earth 1 counterpart is, right? You know, with Cisco, it was Reverb who had full-blown control of his powers and actually was able to manifest secondary powers based upon, you know, his expertise. With this one, it's more of a full-blown realization of what Black Canary should have been since day one. Okay, so what worked really well? Her characterization, I think, worked really well. The way Cassidy performed her, I think, worked really well. Even the outfit and the special effects of her abilities, all of that worked really well. What did I think didn't work so well with Black Siren, though? Okay, if she is supposed to be, they said that she was the last of Zoom's lieutenants, that she was the one lieutenant that Zoom had that stayed the course, they said enough for us to believe that she was amongst the most powerful, if not the most powerful, of his lieutenants. Okay, if all of that is true, why was Wally able to completely blindside her with a car? And consider this, they only had, like, Barry only encountered her once, and then the second time it was Cisco and Caitlyn, which that I actually thought was pretty funny when they were impersonating Reverb and Killer Frost. That I actually got a chuckle out of, but if she was, like, I don't think she was written to be as big of a threat as we should have been led to believe. Given what we were told and given the extent of her abilities, like, she could have leveled blocks upon blocks upon city blocks of Central City by her damn self. And Zoom says he was using her in order to misdirect Barry and the rest of Team Flash because he didn't want them knowing what he was really up to, right? But even if that was the case, she still should have been able to, to, to do so much more damage than what we actually got in the episode. Also, if she is that formidable and if we have to believe she's that clever, if she was smart enough to figure out that Cisco and Caitlyn were impersonating Reverb and Killer Frost, the fact that she, number one, she questioned out the gate, you two are supposed to be dead. So that should have been enough right then and there. But then she, if she was smart enough to go ahead and throw something at Cisco to see if he would catch it with his left or right hand. And then once he caught it with his right hand, she said, oh, well, you know what? Our doppelgangers are complete opposites. Reverb is left-handed. If, if she is that damn clever, she certainly shouldn't have been caught monologuing when she ran into Barry. And she certainly should have been able to, she should have at least tried to escape Cisco and Caitlyn. She should have known they were either stalling or baiting her. So, once again, I don't think she was written as competently as a threat as she could have been given the information we that they gave us in this episode. Okay, so another thing I think didn't work too well, and that's Wally. And here's the thing. Like, I, I can see what it is they're trying to do with Wally and how they're trying to create, you know, how, pretty much how they're trying to set up, like, 
this would be the point in Wally's arc that, you know, this would be the peak, I would think. I would, or at least I would consider it. We're getting to that point when he finally realizes that he's become a speedster. I would have to think that would be the peak of his character arc, right? So I get what they're trying to do, sort of bringing him from a place of selfishness to sort of bringing him to a place of self of self guilt to now bringing him to a proactive place but i think that when you want to talk about like you know what i mentioned earlier with barry where people thought that barry's optimism was misplaced and that it's really turning into sort of this reckless endangerment of himself wally is that full-blown like joe and barry had like no joe is in the right joe is in the right Wally is going out of his way, putting himself in harm's way. And regardless of what his reasoning may be, guess what? His, his practices, his actions, they only help submit Joe's concerns. Because it's not like Wally is actually trying to outthink these metahumans. It's not, you know, he's not pulling a uh, Kevin McAllister, if you will, from Home Alone. He's not coming up with these master plans or these master schemes that sort of put him on equal footing or give him a vantage against uh, these metahumans. No, he's just going out there like a reckless civilian thinking that he can just go ahead, pick up a pistol and go to war. No, you can't, dude. No, you cannot. You, you do not. You aren't equipped to do that. You don't have superpowers. Hell, you aren't even uh you aren't even trained in law enforcement. You know, it reminds me of how Patty used to go ahead and sort of confront metahumans earlier in the season, but at least Patty was a police officer and she wanted, you know, she wanted to what was it? She wanted to be a forensic scientist. She knew something about crime scene investigation. She knew something about science. She knew how to use her brain to sort of give her a hand in what she was trying to do. Wally doesn't have any of that. And then this whole idea that Barry is just going to co-sign because it's like, oh, Wally's heart is in the right place and he's going to be a hero someday. So we need to just go ahead and let him do what he's doing. No, no, you will. If, if this was Arrow, Wally would have been got. He would have gotten killed straight up. He would have gotten killed by now because it's like, no, it's like, yeah, all setting all that stuff up for Wally, like how he feels about it. You know, this whole idea that he has a new lease on life because Flash gave him a second chance by saving him. And so he should make the most of it. Like all of that is good. What I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, is what he is actually doing in order to fulfill that need that he has. And I, I don't think it's working because because honestly, what Wally had plot armor in this week's episode. He really did. We knew nothing was going to happen to him because we knew Wally was going to make because because we need his character for later on in the story. That was it. Other than that, there was there should have been no reason why Wally didn't just completely get murked by a meta. Real talk. Real talk. So I think. I, I, I think that could have been improved on if, if if nothing else they like like why wouldn't you just write it to where Wally tried to assist Joe and the rest of CCPD while they're go while they're dealing with the metahumans right why not just make it this thing where it's like Wally's trying to get involved with Joe's police work and that's his way of trying to help out Instead of him doing it by himself, you know, because he because that would have made more sense because at least then he would have been surrounded by police officers. So it would give him it would give him a sense of security, even if there wasn't because we know that the police officers can't really deal with these metas on the same level that Barry can. At least that way, it would make more sense why Wally would be willing to take the risk. That's all I'm saying. All right. And finally, that's going to bring me to. The part of the episode I thought just didn't work at all, and I mentioned earlier that you know it, it was the the ending. Like I don't think they stuck. I don't think they stuck the landing at the ending, right? But now that I really think about it, it's every scene with Zoom, and it's so disappointing. Why? Because the two scenes we got with Zoom prior to the ending, I actually think were some of his best scenes since. The identity reveal, like his monologue to Barry was actually written well. 
his conversation with Black Siren was actually written well. But then by the time we get to the ending, he shows up at uh, the West home. He kills Henry, which I absolutely hated because you all know how I feel about Henry if you've been listening to my last two Flash reviews. So they kill off Henry and then... It seems like all of a sudden he's trying to make Barry realize that he and Barry are the same person. What the hump? I've said it in previous reviews and I'm just going to go ahead and reiterate it once again. The major problem with Zoom is that he does not have a clear objective motive. We do not know what it is he is after. We don't know what his end game is. And it seems like, because, and here's the other thing too, because I think the last three episodes we've gotten have all had different writers. It seems like the writers themselves have not even decided on what Zoom's motive is. You know, and it's, it's so weird because we know in the first half of the season, of course, it was, oh, to get Barry speed. But once he got it, what, oh, I'm going to kidnap Caitlyn and take her back to Earth 2. Oh, no. I decided I want to go back to Earth 2 and, t I mean, I'll go back to Earth 1 and take over Earth 1. And I'm going to start by going to Central City. And I'm going to bring in all of these Earth 2 metahumans to take over the city. And I'm going to use Black Siren to disguise my in-game. Oh, Never mind, now I want to make Barry see that we're the same. And now, based off of the preview that we got and based off of Cisco's vibes, it seems like the end game has something to do with Earth 2. So we're going back to Earth 2. What the hell is this dude trying to do? That, oh my, y'all don't, bruh. Y'all have to understand, this is so infuriating to watch because it's like, how can I even, like, I, I can't even get on board with a villain that does not even know what the hell he wants and cannot even make up his own mind about what he's doing. Seriously. And from what I get from the preview for the next episode and then also based upon... Cisco's vibes. It seems like what Zoom's trying to do, or what I, what it looks like, is he trying to make an interdimensional singularity happen in Earth 2, like what happened at the end of Season 1 of Flash? Because that's what it looks like, and he even built this giant ass ring. Like, is that what he's trying to do, or does it have something to do with, like, He's trying to connect all the Earths or make them crash into... I don't know what the hell is going on, but here's the thing. What it looks like has absolutely no... We, we, we have no previous knowledge to set that up. It seems like this is something he just decided to do out of the fucking blue, out of the thin air that has absolutely nothing to do with anything else he's done prior to the season. And if that's the case, like I said, they are writing this, they are writing Zoom as if he is a bad comic book villain. And I mean bad, I don't mean bad as in, oh, this dude is just a nasty dude. I mean bad as in, no, poor quality. Not well written. Like, the, the, I don't know what else I can say, guys. I don't know what else I can say about all of the faults with Zoom, but it is not working. And this episode was a huge disappointment in that because, like I said, those first two scenes were really good. And it was like, oh, man, Zoom's planning something, and this is going to be great because, remember, next week is our finale. Next week is our finale, and that's the lead up to it. Kill Henry. Oh, look, Flash, I killed your daddy. La, 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 la. I'm not feeling it, guys. I'm not feeling it. I don't. I don't see what was the reason in doing that, other ju other than just to mess with Barry. Um, that doesn't seem to serve any greater purpose or any greater end game. And I just get the feeling that once we get that finale next week, it's just gonna be loaded with BS. It's gonna be loaded with BS. That's gonna wrap up this week's Flash episode review. I wanna thank you all for joining me again this week. In the comments below, leave your thoughts on this week's episode. Leave your thoughts on anything I addressed in this review. 
And then let me know what you all think we're going to see in next week's finale because I'm up to here right now with it. I really am. If you like this review, please feel free to thumb it up, share it with other fans of the show and people you think would get a kick out of this review. And if you have yet to do so, subscribe to the OAW YouTube channel. Annotation is above head. Join me tomorrow night for my Arrow episode review. And with that being said, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Commander-in-Chief. I'm signing off. And until next time, peace.